first time I ever saw footage of the Doors, um, Jim Morrison made me want to be a front man. I was just so um, shocked and amazed at how he had no fear up there, and I wanted to eventually be like that. You may say that I'm too young to sing the blues. I never had the time to listen to bad news. There's a lot of pressure in the business to to change who you are in order to make yourself sell better, and um, we've experienced some of that. Definitely, obviously, because we're kids, I mean, people automatically assume you know they're going to be a boy band or something, you know. But that's not us. We love playing live, nothing detracts or anything like that, you know. At first, it was tough to get people to go along with it because they think, you know, just a bunch of kids. And now, people seem to be um, understanding what we're trying to do and what we're trying to get across to people. And it's just really awesome when people enjoy it. I grew up in a household where my dad had music playing all the time and uh, all different types of music. Um, so, ever since Charlie was little and Kevin obviously was little, We've had music playing all the time, all different types. Live and on right. CDs or records. Or <laughs> right. Dad would always play music around the house, either on CDs or uh, him, himself playing the piano or guitar. And then I remember one time he took us with him on one of his business trips. It was actually to Vegas. I was about nine. And that's when we saw the uh, posters all around town for the, the Beatles Cirque du Soleil show Love. I went and bought the CD soundtrack from it, and Charlie just really loved the soundtrack. So we, I went out and I, I bought all the, you know, all the Beatles' greatest hits, mm -hmm. and he just started li listening to them and loving it. And as he's talked about before, that was really one of the things that, uh, you know, really started him thinking about actually playing and creating. We'd both been playing instruments for a long time. I was started the piano when I was six drums when I was nine, and Kevin, you playing guitar at nine, right? Mm -hmm. But he had been taking lessons, um, both Charlie and Kevin, they both started on piano, and then he had switched to drums at that point when we took that trip to Las Vegas, and that's when his interest went from, okay, to, to telling them, time to practice, you, you know, you never, your teacher's coming over, you gotta, after that it was, we didn't tell him to practice. He was so into the music that Kevin got him and played with him that he just, th there was no telling him to practice anymore. Now it was just a natural, I can't wait to learn it, I can't wait to get better. And that's what took, took him up a notch. And then of course, Kevin came a little later with his guitar playing and um, that's how the whole thing got started. <laughs> Way through of seventh grade, and then I started switching to online school because I had no time to practice guitar anymore. The boys' school situation has changed this year. For the first time, they are doing virtual school. They still have a teacher for every class, and they have online classes. And we did that because they, you know, um, wanted to play out more than just Fridays or Saturdays or Sundays. We started on. Um, playing a lot more. The show started picking up and uh, playing a lot more frequently. And um, my drive to school was 40 minutes. So I was getting home at like four o'clock. When we play shows around, we usually start at five or six. So I gotta be there to set up an hour earlier. So it didn't really work with um, 
with our scheduling to keep going there. If you switch to online, you can work throughout the whole day and have your whole night to work on music. It's a lot easier workload. It's tremendous freedom and uh, and they're learning a lot playing out. So it's right. as far as their mu music education, um, that really is the best thing for them to play, but they obviously need to you know, do their schoolwork, but it gives them the freedom to do it more on their own time. Plus we knew that we wanted to try to make a run at this and that we need, didn't need to be in the structured school form. And we could do our work outside of the classroom. Sometimes it can be challenging because sometimes people your own age, like, they don't really understand what you're trying to do. Yeah, when, when we first started the band, we we played about a gig a month, and now last just last week we played five shows in a week. We have like one gig every weekend, at least. Yeah, one to two shows in the weekend, sometimes even three. It can take away from our ability to go out and you know do stuff with our friends or be out. But all of our friends come to the shows, so we actually get to do it all in one, which is very cool. Sometimes we miss stuff because we're home practicing or, or something, but that's just because we know it'll be worth it. I was really, really inspired by it with a John Mayer um, interview. He said that you should never be ashamed to stay home on a Friday night to practice your music because even if you're missing a party, there's going to be a way better party two years down the road <laughs> if you just work hard and stick to what you love. I think our first gig was the, we played Krabby Bills, you know, Sunday, one o'clock slot. Now we've got the uh, Saturday night slot. And that in itself, we, we viewed as such an accomplishment. But recently, we played First Friday, downtown St. Pete. We had the amazing opportunity to open up for Chicago at the Clearwater Jazz Holiday. December uh, 27th, we're gonna be opening up for Little River Band, and that's another huge show. And we're heading out to LA to record a couple of songs with uh, Warren Hewitt. He's worked with The Fray and Aerosmith, and we're we're so pumped to be out there and working with someone else. No matter how far they go or how successful they become, as long as they can continue to do it, that's because I know it makes them happy. So we just we watch them, we see the re crowd reactions, and we see their reactions from the crowd, and it just it really, really they beam. So. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind uh, that even they're going to be playing music for the rest of their lives. They're such good kids that as parents, we've been blessed to have them as children. And they naturally make you want to do everything you possibly can to help their dreams come true. A lot of people are um, comforted by music. Um, when they hear a song and the lyrics they can relate to, makes them feel like, hey, maybe it's just not me that feels this way. The person who wrote this song seemed like he had the same feelings as me. So I think that you can touch people through music and I think Charlie has that ability. So I, I'm rooting for him. Like people we've never even met before, they're just coming to the show to see us. They've heard about us and they want to see us and meet us and that it's just a great feeling. When I was growing up and stuff, well I guess I still am, but whenever I felt like I didn't really have anybody, I definitely had music always was there to help me through anything. And uh, my favorite artists were always there with me no matter what I was doing or going through. So I wanted to give that to people who are going through something. I want to be the one to be with them there in their iPods or in their cars. Or I want to be there with them. And so that's what I want to do. I want to just give people great music that'll help them through, through everything. So loud, so loud, you found, you found the key. So loud.